Hi, everybody. It's Richard Silver, and I'm here with two of my favorite people. We've got Kayla Heaps Estrin and Mark Wiseletter, and we want to have a quick chat or a chat about some advice that we can give to you or help you with uh, post COVID 19. So, obviously, the past three months have been a big change for everybody. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a world like we, we have never seen. But we want to talk a little bit. I want to talk about post COVID-19 concerns, the health concerns, and then maybe we'll, we'll chat a little bit about the marketplace. So uh, Kaylee, do you want to start us off? What's, what are your concerns? Sure. Yeah, I mean, we have been very, so I run a practice in central Toronto. We have, um, last year we did about 450 million in volume. Since wow. uh, March 15th, we've done about 75 million in volume. So we've still been very active through COVID. Um, so when I look at the protocols, you know, I think the key to any any situation or any challenge is how do you pivot? How do you react? Yeah. So we reacted fairly quickly. We have have all the you know the masks gloves hand wipes whatever yeah. you name it we've got it yeah. um and we've also asked most of our clients if they're selling to vacate the property during that process we just find it's easier uh it's easier from a management perspective it's also means buyers are are more open-minded about seeing homes that are vacant yeah and you can sanitize them yeah, exactly. And I think the big thing going forward is obviously we're not in a climate yet where we can do open houses, but I've become an Instagram open house virtual queen. Yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not saying I'm great at them, but I'm doing them. Um, yeah. And I think the new thing going forward is how will we how will we how will we restart open houses? So in my mind, that's something we've talked about a lot within our brokerage. And it looks to me, I think it will be a sign up sheet where people can say, I'll be there on Sunday at 2.30 and you reserve time slots for specific buyers and you sort yeah. of sanitize in between the time slots. Um, I do think that interaction is important between listing agent and buyer, buyers or buyer's agents. Um, from a marketing perspective, much like you, Richard, we've always done very comprehensive marketing. So we really yeah. haven't had to change our marketing much. We've always done floor plans. We've always done video. We've always done photos. And you're insisting on eight waivers to be signed before entering the house, et cetera. And yeah. by the, the by people. the sellers and the buyers. Um, yeah. I think that's just responsible. You know, I yeah. think the big thing is minds, you know, mindset is, as you know, Richard, some of our colleagues uh, understandably have chosen not to participate in this market because they're not comfortable with COVID yeah. and everyone's entitled to do whatever they're comfortable with. But yeah. I do think that we have to balance being responsible to our communities and our clients while also still keeping in mind that our job, what we're being paid for is yeah, to market exactly. and sell homes. So we can't just say, you know, I recently took over a listing from another company and their agent had refused to enter the house during the course of the 60 day listing. So in 60 days, they had five showings and no offers. We took over the listing in 24 hours. We had six showings and two offers. Yeah. So, you know, we do owe a, a legal duty to our sellers that if you're going to take a listing, you have to engage the market. You can't just say, you know, yeah. I'll, I'll work, but I'm not going to do everything I can do. No, no, you still have to do, you still have to provide the full service. Mark, mm -hmm. just a couple of questions about, uh, so we've, you know, Kaylee and I do the deals, we bring them to you. What what changes have you noticed within your office, but also with other lawyers? And what are, what are they doing now to, you know, as far as coronavirus protocols? Uh, thanks for asking. Um, you know, it's a, it's a crazy time, but also because of some of the changes that other offices have been going through, it's actually becoming uh, much more efficient to close a real estate deal uh, yeah. during these times. And, and I'll explain a little bit why. Uh, the Law Society gave us the ability to sign up clients, you know, yeah. by a video conference. And so we can sign people up anywhere with a secure video conference. And so that made the whole signing process easier. They don't have to come to an office. And then more and more firms are understanding the need to wire money on closing. So the fact that our firm stopped using checks or certified checks years ago, uh, we know that realtors don't like waiting for a check after closing. They like that commission wired right into the account on closing. And that's what we've always done. But the fact that lawyers are now doing more of this, it allows money to transfer faster. You're not waiting for a courier to show up 
at five o'clock with funds for closing because then you're always into delays. And yeah. our firm started the lockbox a few years ago where we, we said, why should we be delivering keys on closing? Let's leave them at the home and the buyer can just go to the house after closing. So from the practical standpoint, deals are closing, but I did want to say something. One thing I've noticed, all those COVID clauses, not needed. They are yeah. not needed. It, the you're talking about in, system, it, it, yeah. Sorry, in the agreement of purchase and sale, they're not needed. That's right. The registry yeah. oh, system is not going down. No, and so they're not. not needed. I see all these clauses, and I know you mentioned those waivers. That'll be my final point. In my yeah. opinion, because real estate is an essential service and buyers and sellers are voluntarily participating in it, they wouldn't be able to sue anybody anyways if they got sick. But I'm not against those waivers being signed. Yeah. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, that's that's all we do. You know, it was interesting. We were just having a conversation, a couple of agents together. And I said, it's interesting now how I go shopping for lawyers for my clients if they're web enabled. And then mm. I thought that's exactly what my clients are doing now. So an, a web and, you know, if I met somebody who couldn't do, an, you know, the the who had to say, who said in-person signing and, you know, we're going to make a check and you can pick up the check. I, I would go, you know, maybe we need to find another lawyer for you. And mm -hmm. it's interesting. This is probably what our clients are going through. They want web enabled agents. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So, and I think this is uh, the market where people will either rise and you'll see the strengths of some of the agents in our industry, or people will just say, this is just, it's too much change for me. It's time for me to pack it up and, and go. Yeah. Yeah, I've been there before. Sadly, uh, your mom and I went through that in the early 80s and the 90s. Uh, you know, that was the 1980s, not the 1880s, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, Mark, I, I, you mentioned to me yesterday that you had some issues around um, uh, tenants. Do you want to just expand on that a bit? Yeah, I know that you're doing wonderful things with showings and your tours and your square footage. Like, it's... Yeah top of the industry with what you're doing um, what we have found unfortunately ever since the province said we will not enforce an eviction that is giving every tenant leverage to frankly ask whatever they want in an example i'd like to show the property well it's not safe if you pay me something maybe i'll agree to let you show it um, I have a buyer that wants to move in. Your lease is over. I'm going to give you the required 60-day notice. Answer, yeah, but you can't kick me out. I'm going to stay for a year. But if you pay me $40,000, I'll leave when you want me to leave. And you know what? It's happening. And what I'm saying to agents is if you have a tenant and you're going to list that property, either make a deal in advance to move them out first so you can stage it, show it, maybe and eventually open house it, or mm -hmm. seriously reconsider whether you want to list it. Unless it's a property that the buyer would be happy to assume the tenant. But otherwise, mm -hmm. that to me is the hardest impact of what's gone on in the last two months. Yeah, and Kaylee and I love, even before COVID, we love our tenants and yeah. tenants and properties. They just add that extra bit of <laughs> energy just, to our lives. Yeah. yeah. So, it, it, you know, okay, so let's, so we've dealt with the health issues around COVID. Um, I'm wondering, you know, I'll just put it out there as a challenge to you, Kaylee. Do you think yeah. we're really going to go back to public open houses or public open houses that are more, I guess, I guess what you're saying is there'll be more like private showings during a, yeah. a time period. Exactly. I don't think that yeah. the public open houses as we knew them will be a thing yeah. for a no. year. And I think that we're yeah. in an interesting market. I mean, listen, I, um, I don't have a crystal ball or I'd probably be sitting on a beach somewhere right now. But my gut instinct is that we're going to have a decent market for the next few weeks, months. And then yeah. I think come, come fall, it'll be a new reality and we'll settle into the new normal, which will be years until it works itself yeah. out. Yeah. 
you and I are, uh, agree on this and people say, oh, Richard, you're so negative. And I go, no, I'm being realistic. I think, I, don't, I, I can't see when you lose this many jobs in, in Canada and you, you know, there's this new way of doing business that it's not going to affect a lot of businesses and that there's not going to be, you know, a lot of, a lot of crazy times in the next two years. But yeah. yes, I think I think for the next couple of months we're going to see you know fine it'll be fine. As soon as September comes and those job reports come up and you hear of more and pe more and pe more and more people having to you know declare bankruptcy, I I think you're going to see a big change. Yeah, I think you and I will be a little bit more protected than the average person just given the markets we work in. Um, but yes. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, as we know from other changes, it's hard to believe I've been in it for 21 years now, Richard, which I know you've been in it a lot longer than me, but 40, it feels like a long time. 40, <laughs> 21, wow. yeah, I know. Yeah. I remember when you, you, you were only 26 at the time when you, in it, when you started. Yeah, 23 actually, in oh, reality. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> um, but I think that, you know, in that time, even in that time, we've seen market changes like 2000 and nine eight nine yeah. um yeah. and you get through it you know the best agents will always get through it so yeah but 2008 and 2009 people go back to that and i go that wasn't our issue the issue that was a u.s issue that got sort of got pushed into it but it it, it was more of a housing shortage in the u.s yes there's a housing yeah. shortage now so that that will help even the figures that are coming out from the cmhc I yeah. think those got a bad rap because what he was talking about was all of Canada. Now, Toronto and the GTA, you know, we're we're really a hub here, so I don't think it's going to be as bad. But, you know, I certainly think we're going to have a wild ride in the next couple of years. I agree. I mean, I think the underlying factors that will keep Toronto perhaps better off than other places, our employment, you know, our employment numbers typically yeah. are a little bit better. Our immigration numbers are stronger. Our tech coming to Toronto is better. So, I, and we've had a long time um supply issue so I, I hope you know i think that we'll still be okay but i do think that what we're living in now is um is a pretty positive few weeks or months or whatever it ends yeah. up being yeah. yeah dear i used to say uh you know back in the 80s we used to say dear god please give us one more boom and i promise not to spend it all yeah <laughs> that was the, that was the realtors do you remember those days mark at all I don't know. I, I do. I do. And, and you know, I, I think that rather than go back to 2008, you know, we all experienced 2017 when the government right. brought in the speculation yeah. tax. Remember that April? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Prices fell 15 to 20 percent almost overnight. And you had all those people that bought before thinking they were going to sell. They couldn't sell. Everything went down, and it was a disaster. And I remember what we had to do during those days to keep deals alive. And and it's true that there have been a lot of you know buyers and sellers coming to me with deals you know needing to be reworked, extended for similar reasons. People have lost jobs now, but I'm finding that I'm able to settle and work out extensions yep. that are fair to everybody about 80 to 90 percent of the time in other words saving the deal whereas three years ago the numbers were not that high because it really was an incredibly sharp turn in the market so i'm not seeing that and no. i you know have done enough of these deals over the last couple of months but my own concern about the future is the lack of immigration you know, yeah. one of the things that was Incredible. always fueling the market was that no matter where you were in the world, I used to say to people that if you said to anybody in the world, where would you like to live? The top three choices would be the GTA, no matter wh who you ask in the world. And I still think the answer is yes to that today. And that's one of the reasons I've always been long term bullish on our market here, because the whole world wants to come here. It's safe. They have so many cultures, communities. But right now, we've stopped, you know, or we put the brakes on, and that I see as a as a, a impact at least for maybe the next six months, which will contribute a little bit to a bit of a 
either price reduction or slowdown, but long term, I'm not seeing that. I agree yeah. with you. I agree with you. I think it's temporary, whatever it is that we experience. I, I think also, I mean, Airbnb, you know, mm-hmm. people exchanging houses, all of that business that was built on travel. Uh, I mean, people in the travel business are really going to suffer restaurants, uh, stores and shops that were built on or that, that were not uh, web enabled are, are going to have problems. And I think we have to be prepared for that. We're going to have to sit down with our clients and have some realistic discussions and be very empathetic. And I think that's all we can do, really. Yeah, listen. So it's your first job. Listen. Exactly. Yeah. And, yeah. and ask good questions like. You know, if if this doesn't happen in the time period you need it to happen in, what what's our what's our plan two? What's our plan yeah. B? Yeah. You know, Mark, do you find um, you know we talk about web enabled lawyers? Uh, do you find do you think there's going to be a transition for a lot of lawyers out of the business, out of doing real estate law because of you know the changes? Yeah. And well, I, I can give you an example uh, right now. You know, we spent the last, in our firm, realestatelawyers.ca, we spent the last three years being registered at every bank with a trust account. But not only that, we got our name listed as a bill payee, which means that any buyer from their home computer can actually transfer the down payment to our trust account without having to line up at a branch with reduced hours in a mass for one to two hours on the day of closing. And a lot of firms heard about us, especially when when the crisis happened, and they all rushed to do it. It's not something you can flip a switch and just make an application. It takes at least a year. And so I've had many senior lawyers call me exhausted saying, I just spent an hour in line at the bank to transfer money to your firm because I wouldn't send my clerk because I was a little concerned of safety. So I do think that if firms are finding, if they're not up to be able to do things instantly, uh, it's gonna be very hard for them to continue. Yeah, I think, and and I think, thank God for the the changes at the uh, Law Society to allow, uh, you know, uh, electronic signatures. I mean, we've been we've been dealing with that and fighting for it for years and years and years. And every time we we would do it, and I and I really never understood it because when the closing happens electron, it happens electronically at your office, at the lawyer's office. They just press a button and it's done. But they would not allow for the longest time, you know, a buyer or a seller to sell, uh, to sign electronically. So hopefully we're past that. Hopefully there'll be some new technology. I think every day there's going to be something new for us to work with. It's not perfect. You know, unfortunately, there are still some lenders that require you to actually meet with the client. They want to see an, a signature, you know, with ink before they're going to fund a mortgage. But the good news is there are fewer and fewer of those uh, out there. So it's not perfect, but we're getting there. And I like the fact that lawyers, we can identify clients. Like I can see you now and say, okay, uh, Richard, put your driver's license to the camera. Let me compare it to what you sent me. And I believe that agents, should, will, will be starting to use this for their own FinTrack identification. Yeah. To make that process a lot simpler and safer. So that's where I see maybe some of the changes being beneficial long term once we get, just get through the health part of this. Yeah, there's the health part of COVID-19 and then there's the economic part of COVID-19. And I think mm-hmm. right now we've been so busy focusing on the health part that we've also forgot about the economic and also, you know, the changes in the ways people do business, the way we do business, the way our clients do business. And, you know, mm-hmm. is there is there still an ongoing need to be close to your business? Or, you know, Kaylee, are you gonna go up north someplace and, and work remotely for six, seven months of the year? I mean, you know? the reality for me is I'm, in, I'm still meeting with people face to face every day, so I can't yeah. leave town. But some yeah. of my back office, like my finance person, is now working oh. from the cottage. Yeah. Um, so we are, you know, certainly, I think that's one thing that I've talked about a lot when I'm going into people's houses. Some of the motivation to move is a lot of corporate um, 
you know, executives have been told they're not going back to the office this year. So they're wanting to make sure they have a very dedicated home office space and a space for their kids to learn. And then the other big thing I've seen from a demand perspective is that lifestyle is really pushing people. So people yeah. are wanting pools, they're wanting privacy, they're wanting space. So I think that COVID will have a, an impact on, on our marketplace. No, I don't mean from a price perspective or anything like else, but just from a demand perspective, I think the drivers have changed. I was, I was speaking with a couple of second home uh, agents, one, one in Hawaii and one oh, yeah. in Vail, Colorado, a few minutes ago. And, you know, we, we were trying to figure out whether the second home market was now becoming the primary residence market. Oh, because interesting. that's what they're starting to see, is they're starting to see people say, I don't need to be in San Francisco. I don't need to be in New York. I mean, right now to, to you know, oh, go yeah. to work in New York, it's, oh. You know, so they're seeing that changeover right now. They're busy, busy, busy doing huge deals, all electronically, all virtually, and mm -hmm. and they're they're as surprised as anybody. But that's the reality that people want to, you know, they're they're thinking of moving moving to another location where they can do everything they've done in the city. Well, for sure, people who used to do like the daytime flight to Vancouver for a meeting or the daytime flight to Ottawa for a meeting, those days are gone. We now know you yeah. can meet online very easily. So I think that exactly. that type of travel will have a huge impact on the uh, the airline industry and also on lifestyle choices. Yeah, I think a lot of people celebrated Easter on Zoom. They celebrated Passover on Zoom. They're going to be, you know, weddings on Zoom if there haven't been already. And uh, certainly, uh, you know, it's here for the future, I think. Yeah. Well, Mark and Kaylee, I just wanted to say thank you very much. I really appreciated the time and uh, helping us get through. And the wonderful thing, um, you know, that I know that Treb now is in, you know, has for us is they have some great guidelines that we can follow for uh, the future, for COVID-19 guidelines that deal with um, issues, uh, you know, protocols, and you know, have a look at the future. And I think, and I think. You know, again, um, they're they're trying to be sensitive to us the way we're trying to be sensitive to our clients. So I look yeah. forward to. I think it's going to be an interesting time. Mark, any any last notes? Oh, so I know that you know Treb seems to be front and center with always putting together programs like these, asking professionals to come in and and just do webinars now and just making them available to all the agents. There's such a wealth of information at Treb. And that you should take the time to learn because this is the best time to update yourself on your skills and changes in the law. And just Treb is such a great resource for that. So I know that I've done several webinars yeah. uh, for Treb uh, just on content. And uh, I just think that people should make use of that as much as possible. Yeah, yeah we we're, uh, we were busy in the midst of planning the uh, April May event for Treb and uh, we had some great meetings in the fall and it was going to be quite the event because it's really our, it's really Treb's 100th anniversary as well this year. So uh, you know it's uh, we had all sorts of good things about to happen. So we'll see hopefully we'll have them in the fall but uh, you know everything was lined up and ready to go but you know life happens so yeah. Another time, another time. Another Anyways, time. Kaylee, thanks again. Thank any last, much. any last words at all, or Her just say any last words? Oh no, I mean, I think the main thing is I always try and stay positive. Whatever changes, we'll just adapt and it'll make us stronger. Exactly. And eyes forward, not behind us. Yeah, I had somebody come up to me the other day, and he said, "You know, we're going to get through this, but we're going to get through this better." Oh, without question. Thought, I thought yeah, exactly that's and that's the right attitude to have. Anyways, yeah. thank you very very thank much. I really appreciate much. appreciate your time and have a wonderful wonderful uh, you know going forward. Thanks, Richard. Great to see you as always. Yeah, stay Pleasure. healthy and be safe, both of you. Exactly. Thank you, stay Kaylee, safe. Richard. That's uh, pleasure you. joining you. Thank Pleasure. you. That's it. Stay safe. Yes.